All right, well, greetings, everybody. Um, I've had something in my possession for a while. Um, again, this is one of those products that was sent to me um, to look at, uh, but I'm also just genuine, really excited about it, and I wanted to look at it uh, before they ever reached out to me, um, and that's the YOLO Box Pro from YOLO Live. Now, this is a all-in-one streaming platform. It has multiple um, inputs on it, so you can take you know, multiple sources from different cameras or from your computer. Um, it has a touch screen uh, for doing the switching. So unlike products like the um, Atom Mini, um, which uses physical buttons, uh, this uses a touch screen, which gives you a whole lot more options um, in what you can do. Um, and it just has a lot of other really nice little bells and whistles um, in this package uh, that is actually no bigger than like a preview monitor you might have um, on like your DSLR or other cameras. In fact, you can use it as a preview monitor um, if you want to. So what I'm gonna do is get it out of the box. I'm gonna hook it up to a bunch of different things to see how it handles. Uh, and then we will take a look at some of its features. All right, so I wanna give you a little tour of how I hooked this thing up so you can see everything uh, that's in it. Um, here at the bottom, you have an SD card slot. I've loaded that with a couple of sample videos um, so we can see what those look like. Um, it has three HDMI inputs, um, as you can see. So one we got coming from this uh, PTZ camera because how do we not include a PTZ camera? We have to do that. Um, the other one we have coming from this camcorder. Now this one is, um, a bit of a trick, um, and I say that because this one is actually a PAL, P-A-L standard camera, not NTSC, which if you're in the United States is what you're used to using. This is an NTSC camera. That is a PAL camera. This is gonna give it video at 30 or 60 uh, hertz. That's gonna give it to it at 50 hertz. Uh, we'll see how it handles those two things. Um, I also have a USB webcam um, hooked up to it. Uh, and my computer is hooked up to it actually in a couple of different ways. Um, over there, we've got the HDMI out. So it'll look like a kind of second monitor to the computer. Um, and then we've got this USB-C connection, which is going to allow this to appear as a webcam to the computer. Or so they say. So let's uh, power it on and see how it works. All right, so you can see we've got it booting up now. I've turned off some of my studio lights to cut down on the glare a little bit. Um, it does take a minute to boot up because uh, this is essentially underneath um, a lot of smartphone hardware. It's got uh, the same Snapdragon processor that a lot of high-end smartphones use. Uh, it runs the Android operating system, um, in fact, which means it's upgradable and stuff, which is great. Um, it will you know, connect to your internet, connect to your Wi-Fi, um, which I've already done. I've also created an account, which is something you'll, you'll need to do. It's pretty basic, they don't ask for too much. Uh, but once you got that, you're here in this mode and then it's really easy to go ahead and get start live streaming. Just hit plus, we're gonna just create a new live stream. We're gonna give it a really creative name called test. Uh, we're gonna leave all the optional stuff for now and then go ahead and hit create. So there it is, click on it, open it up, and here we go. Um, so this is pretty cool. So if we look at what we have um, in this, we see it's picked up uh, my HDMI sources. There's HDMI 1, there's HDMI 2, there's HDMI 3, so those are my three HDMI cameras. This USB camera, um, it picked up, which I really like. You haven't seen too many of these all-in-one devices that will actually take an HDMI input so that you can use you know, your smart, you know, your, uh, you know, your Logitech webcam or whatever as an input source um, if you want to. It's not gonna be as good a quality as maybe some of your HDMI sources, uh, but it's super cool uh, that you can do that. I have not seen that um, before. Now, we're gonna go and add a source. And what I wanna add is a local video. So I told, showed you before that I put an SD card in here and I put some videos on that SD card and here they are. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that one, done. Um, and I'm gonna add that there. 
as a video source for me. Uh, so when I'm switching between, I can click on that guy um, and load it up uh, and play it. And you can, as you can see, you can have multiple video clips uh, ready to go. So very robust switching right here. You know, you can see six sources pretty easily, uh, which is more than probably most of us are, are gonna have uh, to switch between. Um, so this is our preview panel. Now, of course, it wants to know where do we want to live stream to? Uh, built in, uh, you know, connections for YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, um, and then of course, custom RT, RTMP, which is the standard for all live streaming eventually usually runs over RTMP. Um, they do advertise that you can run multiple of these at the same time. So you can take the same stream and you can stream to multiple destinations. This is great, but it comes with a caveat. Um, they're not using any kind of restreaming service here um, if you use it, if you do it this way. Uh, so you're going to have separate uploads of your video content coming through your internet connection um, out into the world. That may be fine if you've got a lot of upload. Uh, but if you start running multiple of these at HD quality, um, you, you may run into some issues there. So you may want to consider um, doing um, some, you know, doing a restream service, uh, which I do believe YOLO themselves even offers. Uh, there's an opportunity to add even more um, if you want, if you have multiple RTM, RTMPs, for example, that you want to do. Um, so of course you want to do that. All right, now we have some overlays. Um, these are great. It gives you an example one. Um, this is one I've loaded uh, with our church logo. Uh, you can uh, create overlays, image overlays, lower thirds, different countdown timers, um, web URL. This is a neat feature. You can go ahead and customize, enter a URL, um, and it will take that web page and turn it into something that you can then overlay on your screen um, if you want to show somebody uh, some off a web page, which is which is pretty neat. Um, so if you want to do um, like an image display or something like that, um, you're going to load those up onto that SD card slot so you can load all your media on there if you want, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you've got these and you can just go ahead and overlay them um, when you want them on there. So there we go, we got we got the logo on there now, and I can go that one, add that one too, so you can add multiple um, and take them off. So if you've got a giving link or you've got a, you know, just names or whatever, you can load all that up right there. Um, this feature is quite frankly, amazing. So invite guests um, allows you uh, to literally do what it says, which is to invite guests. You can send them a email, put your email address, send them an email, um, and they are gonna get a link, a link to a web page uh, that's gonna open up their webcam and their microphone on their computer and then bring them in as a source down here. So if you're doing an interview from somebody who's far away and you want to bring them in, um, you know, over the web, uh, you can do that natively in this app. Now, there's other ways to do it by loading Zoom up onto your computer and having your computer be a source um, into this. That, of course, is possible. But the fact that that is built into the system um, is really neat and that you can then manage your guests all right here, muting them, unmuting them, um, putting them on screen, taking them off screen. Uh, right here. That that I mean that that is a killer feature. That is something we've we've been begging for in a lot of these systems uh, for a long time, and and here it is. We we finally have it. All right, so we have an audio mixer, basic audio mixer. Um, so we've got audio from all of our different sources. So all the HDMI ins can provide audio if you want. Um, there's also on the Pro model two audio inputs. Um, they're both three and a half millimeter, and one is a line in and one is a mic in. So if you've got a soundboard that you're taking all your audio from, you can do that. You can bring that on in. By default, it's going to have auto follows video on. So because it has that, uh, that, that basically will switch the audio between whatever video it is that you happen to be sharing at the moment. It's a good feature. Sometimes you'll want it. Sometimes you won't. Um, but just know that you can you can sh change it around and, and do what you like as far as your audio mix. Um, you've got pretty nice, fairly fine grained audio controls um, here. Different levels for each one. So if you're getting a hotter signal off of one than the other, uh, you can manage it that way. Scoreboard. Um, this is a bit rudimentary, but it works. 
Um, so the scoreboard display um, is kind of what it says it is, and you can see it puts it right there. And because this is a touch screen, I can drag it and stick it wherever I want to stick it. I can move it around, um, you know, if I want to put it over there, wherever I want to put it. Um, you can customize things like the team name, um, how many points they currently have, um, you know, what the period is, uh, and then you know, there's actually different um, scoreboard styles where you can ch change the font and the background color and, you know, all those sorts of things um, to the point where you can even include team logos uh, and, again, different font choices and all of that. So if you're trying to do, especially if you're trying to, like, stream uh, sports for, like, college or maybe high school, uh, something like that, you can do a pretty good job all just right here uh, with having this on-screen scoreboard and customizing it for uh, whatever it is that you happen to be doing. All right, the comments section. Um, so these are comments um, that will be um, uh, that have been posted on your live stream um, as it is happening. Um, so you would need to use those uh, Facebook and YouTube uh, connections in order to make this work, but you can monitor live stream comments as they come in, which is super cool. Um, you can um, then change how those comments are going to um, display um, in, in the different ways that you may want to have them display. Go back there, all right. All right. The auto switching feature. So some places, sometimes you may want to have an auto switch where um, it switches between um, the different modes um, it, or the different inputs, depending on what's going on. If you've got multiple cameras looking at the same source and you just want to stream between them, you know, go between them, um, you can do that. You can have it do it in a loop. Um, so you can choose which sources to con contain um, in your uh, in your auto switch. So as I say, I want to contain the three HDMI's and the USB. So done on that, and you can say, all right, how long on each one? I want them to loop. Um, I want them to be in a random order, kind of between them. Uh, and then I want to identify uh, my main video source as number one. So if you wanted to, if you didn't have a loop on, you could send it, um, you could send it through the auto switch, uh, and then it would you know, kind of come back to your main one. Um, Nice feature, not used a whole lot, uh, but but can give you a little bit of a fanciness, especially if you're a one-person show um, and you've just got three or four cameras all facing the same subject, just at different angles. Gives you a way to switch between them where you don't actually have to do it. Uh, and then we get into our settings. You know, so different settings, um, manager SD card, things like that. Program out. Um, so there is an HDMI out on this. Um, so if you hit the program out, that is going to change the HDMI, um, so it's actually showing what is being streamed. So you're getting a live preview on an external monitor or screen of what's actually going out into the world, which is great. Um, we can add the USB-C out. Um, like I said, I've got my computer hooked up over USB-C, so this is going to send um, the, the program out through uh, my uh, USB-C into my laptop. It's going to show up as an external monitor on my laptop, so anything that can use or an external uh, camera, so anything that can use an external camera can now get the content from this to it. So it's Zoom or, you know, um, Teams or, you know, anything like that. Uh, so if you're going to be using this as you're switching, but then you want to broadcast not over RTMP or any of the streaming sources, but you want to broadcast to something that's more of like a Zoom or video conferencing source, you can do that. And it just makes a webcam out of it on the USB C. Um, and then, of course, there's other settings and we can, you know, dig into. Um, but I don't think we really need to. So, so there you go. I mean, that, that really is um, the long and, and short of what this thing is. So I can, you know, now I can just live switch between uh, my various content pieces if I want. So that's my laptop. Um, that's that um, USB camera. Um, and then if I go ahead and click on my video, um, you'll see it just starts playing the video. And I have some control over, um, you know, how that plays and what resolution um, it plays at. And there's actually further controls inside of it where you can dig any deeper into how it should behave um, when it plays a video. So, you know, you've got your monitoring right here so you can see your upload and your download speed. Um, you can see your status uh, of your battery. This has a built-in battery. It's not actually plugged into any battery source, uh, power source right now. It is drawing off its own battery. Um, and then your Wi-Fi signal. And there you are. You are ready to go and live stream to your little heart's content by just pushing all these little nice little buttons.
Oh, yeah. It actually kind of feels nice. It's, I like that. It's very responsive. Uh, very little delay uh, between, between the selections, uh, which is also something pretty wonderful. All right, so that is the YOLO box. I was just looking over my notes to make sure I hadn't missed anything, and I had. I had missed a couple of things. Um, it does have built-in chroma keying for green screening and things like that, so that is an option. Uh, you can also crop the video, which is actually not a feature I have seen, um, really, in any of these other all-in-one boxes. Uh, the ability to actually crop the video, so if you're getting, if you want to kind of, if, you're getting, if your camera's maybe a little far away uh, and you don't have the ability to adjust the camera directly, you can do some cropping um, on that as well. It does have a standard um, quarter inch uh, mount on the bottom, a screw mount that you can plug that so that you can mount it to pretty much anything you can mount any camera related stuff to. Um, and by way of comparison, this is like the seven inch monitor and this is just a monitor. All it does is take an HDMI in and show it to you. This is my seven inch monitor. It's really not that much bigger, the, the yellow box is. So if you wanted to set this on top of a, you know, connect it to the top of your camera, run the HDMI, a short little run of HDMI out of the camera into this guy, uh, you could totally do it and switch from the camera itself. Uh, if you combine that, say, with some wireless HDMI solutions, which I have a couple of videos um, that talk about the wireless HDMI solution that we use around here, uh, those solutions are often battery powered um, and can be mounted. Uh, so if you got yourself a nicer kind of bracket that actually allows for multiple um, kind of standard mounts, I could really see having the YOLO box like in the middle and then on either side, a couple of wireless HDMIs bringing in signal from other places um, all mounted onto your camera rig. Uh, and then you're kind of a one person show from there. Uh, that would be a pretty neat setup, especially if you're doing mobile. Um, which brings me to what, when I, where I would use this. Um, this would be great, fantastic if you're in a mobile environment. If you need to be able to move it or you wanna be able to lock your equipment up um, or you need to be able to take it from place to place, this thing is fantastic. Um, even in a fixed environment where all your equipment is just there, um, still I think a really great option. There aren't too many touchscreen options um, out there uh, anymore uh, that work as well as this does. So if you if, if space is a concern, if you're a single person, uh, maybe you're an online streamer, gaming streamer, whatever, and you want something that's kind of just gonna sit on your desk um, and be simple to use right at your fingertips, um, that would be this guy for sure. Uh, so. Pretty much most environments you can think of other than like super, super high end, maybe super high end professional environments where you've got multiple cameras, you've got multiple people working on it. Um, you need a little bit more sophistication. Uh, maybe if you got that higher end, um, you know, Blackmagic Atom setup, uh, you know, that, that may be a way to go. Um, but at the price point, which I believe right now, uh, the pro model, uh, there is a non-pro model, uh, which has a seven inch screen. This is an eight inch, um, one less HDMI connection and a few other, and it loses um, several of the bells and whistles that I really like in this one. You also step down in terms of processor. You go down to a lower Snapdragon instead of the kind of high end one that this one has. Uh, that would be workable. I would think of that in the same way I think of like the Atom ATM Mini. Um, that's just the normal Mini. Great little minimal solution if you're really on a budget. You know, you wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt, um, but this is another one of those places that you spend your money, and I would almost always advise somebody just to spend, wait until you can spend a few extra dollars, get the pro model so that you have those features and room to grow um, if you want to. So um, I, I, I'm gonna call this honestly a, a pretty strong recommendation um, if you're looking to get into live streaming and you want an all-in-one solution that truly is all-in-one. Um, you just need to plug your cameras into it and go, uh, and it does fairly intuitive and easy to use. Uh, so I think they've got a really, really great product here, um, and I'm glad to get to take a look at it. All right, well, if you did, uh, if you do want to take a look at it, there's links in the description below. Clicking those links actually helps uh, support this channel if you're not already subscribed. Um, it really, really does make a difference if you subscribe. I know all YouTubers say that, but it actually is true. Um, so if you're not subscribed, I invite you to do so. And until we see each other again, have a great day. Hey everybody, if you found that video helpful, please hit like and subscribe and also check the video description for links to any products you've seen in today's videos. Doing that really helps support this channel. Also, don't forget to leave a comment with any questions that you may have. A lot of the content I do is based directly on the questions of the feedback you give. So keep that coming and I will keep making them. Thank you.